In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create gradients and animate them like this in Adobe XD. First, let's create a new artboard and rename it. In order to create the moving multicolor gradient, I used a solid colored background, a few colored circles, and a rectangle on top with a blur effect. By using a different color background or different color circles, you'll definitely achieve a different look to your design, so play around with this. For my design, I'll use a dark purple background, this light pink color as one of the circles, a teal color, and also a yellow color. When you check the background blur box, it will blur anything behind it. There's also a few different options you can play around with to get a different effect for your design. The first option is blur amount, and I usually prefer this to be very dramatic, so I'm going to move it all the way to 50. For brightness, you can play around with light and dark, but because I want a dark background, I'm going to go with something in the negative. You can also play around with the opacity, but for this design, I'm just going to keep it at zero. So what I'm designing for this tutorial are three different screens for a made-up book app. So for this first screen, I'll just have Welcome to the Book Club. Since I want the user to know that this is the first of three screens, I'll add three small circles on the bottom and color in the first one with a different color. For the second screen, I'll duplicate this artboard and change the messaging around and also change the circles on the bottom since this is the second screen in the process. I'll duplicate the artboard one more time and change it around. This will be the final design in the sequence, so I want there to be a call to action and a button. Okay, so now I have all three screens, but right now the background looks the same on all of them. When a user taps on the screen to move forward, I want the gradient to change. So in order to do this, I'll just change the circles around and maybe change the size a little bit just so that there's something differentiating it. Copy and paste the same circles and then move them around and resize them again. Now you could just go into prototype mode and connect these three artboards as they are, but you won't get the same effect. The text will fade into the next artboard's text and it just won't look very nice. So instead, I'll put an artboard in between. Duplicate artboard one and then just change the opacity of the text to zero. Then duplicate artboard two and do the same, change the text to a zero opacity. This way we'll have a nice flow in our animation where the text will disappear and then the gradient will change into the next screen. So let's switch to prototype mode. Highlight the home button for the first artboard so that it turns blue. Click on the artboard name and then click and drag the arrow to connect it to artboard 2. For this action, we want the user to tap, so we'll use the tap trigger. Auto animate transition and just a 0.1 second duration because we want this part of the animation to be quick. Select artboard 2, and this is really important. Be sure not to click on the background because if you do this, you won't be able to use the time trigger. So click on the artboard name, click and drag the arrow to the next artboard. This time we want the trigger to be time with a zero second delay so it immediately starts with this transition. Keep it at auto animate and let's use ease in and out and make the duration 0.6 seconds so it's a little bit longer. We want to give the gradient time to transition. Select artboard 3, click and drag the arrow to artboard 4. Again, for this one, we want to use the tap trigger, auto animate, ease in and out, and just 0.1 second duration. Select artboard 4, click and drag the arrow to the final artboard. Select the time trigger with a 0 second delay, auto animate, ease in and out, and 0.6 seconds for the duration. Now let's go back through and make sure the transitions and timing are all matching up. Let's change the easing to ease in out, and let's change the duration back to 0.1 second. I'm not sure why Adobe XD changed it. 
Okay, all the other ones look good. Just so we have a seamless preview, let's go ahead and connect Artboard 5 to the first Artboard and use a tap trigger. That way we can keep tapping through for the preview. Okay, now we're ready to press play and preview the animation. All right, that looks pretty good. Of course, you can play around with timing and different easing effects to achieve a different animation that you're looking for, but this is how I created the effect. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more Adobe XD tutorials. Leave a comment and let me know which tutorial would you like to see next.